they really consider very highly in determining whether somebody might get a scholarship or not. So we will go through how you should write your personal statement essay, how you should write your question essay, and then uh, look through the recommendation guidelines. These three things are really very, very key in decision-making according to um, the WMI board. <clears throat> because from our first session until today, I have also been you know, interacting with them. And uh, it's clear that these three things are very key in their decision-making. The recommendations need to really suit their interest and come from the people they prefer to be writing your recommendation letters, not just any, anybody. And then uh, we will briefly go through the scholarship application form just to highlight a few things, how you should answer a few questions there. And then maybe we'll do a Q and A at the end of the call. Um, but of course, if you have any question along the way, you can ask. Now, generically, if you're writing an essay, they are intended to be five parts of any essay you are writing. That is generic, that is English, okay? There have to be about five paragraphs, each paragraph talking about one thing, you know. Um, you may have a few more as long as you are within the word limit. It doesn't mean that there must, there must only be five paragraphs, but what is, this, what is being said here is that you should structure any essay such that the first paragraph preferably is an introductory paragraph, and then you have another three paragraphs after that, and you conclude your essay. Those should be the three, I mean, the five paragraphs that your essay should have, uh, have no matter what you are writing on. The subject matter is not an issue, but the structure of an essay should usually have those five paragraphs. So if you choose to have maybe seven paragraphs, and then you are breaking all these uh, you know, important points in between, but you are reflecting the, 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 the body, especially with the at least three different points you are discussing, then that will still make it you know, a point. And I think it will still be acceptable. It's not written on stone that you should have five paragraphs in an essay, but that is the basic structure. So you should have that at the back of your mind, whatever essay you are writing. However, every essay required of you will have a few things somebody is interested more in, okay? Like, the personal statement, according to the WMI application form, they say is a very important part of our decision-making process. Please do not fabricate your life experiences because they can tell. They have a whole number of very many volunteers who read your essays. You know, that's the beginning step, the first stage. All applications are sent across many volunteers to read the essays and they are guided on what are the things they should look out for. How can they tell that a story written by someone in Juba, Yay, or whatever is a true story, not a fabricated story? Sometimes we, we can have the ability to forge stories, fictional stories that may look nice, but it is easier for them to tell that no, this is not a, a true life story. A personal statement is about yourself. You are telling someone about yourself, your life experiences, your achievements, your weaknesses, you know, your, your hobbies, things that interest you, your work, you know, something like that. And it must not in any way be the same as my life story or my life experiences or, um, or my personal statement. It must not. And there is no way they should actually be the same. Everyone has a different uh, life story or experience to share. So having known the basic structure of an essay, how important the personal statement is for this scholarship. Now let's go to what they want you to write in your personal statement. The words, first of all, should be between 500 and 1,000 words. And I posted this in the WhatsApp group that uh, the few of you who had shared their uh, essays with me, I realized they did not keep to this word limit. Word limits are one important, you know, uh, uh, one important criteria or criterion by which they can screen out people who, who may not be eligible for the scholarship. You know, last, last year we threw the personal development training series that EFSS had, um, um, conducts. So we learned about 
something to do with the interviewing. And I learned something very nice called ATS, meaning applicant or application tracking system. All these applications that you are doing online, nobody's going to read 2000 applications word by word to see who will progress to the next stage. First of all, they will be scanned, analyzed by the ATS. Sorry, excuse me. My Otirila was passing by and making noise in the hella. Anyway, so I was saying that the ATS application or applicant tracking system will be the first uh, bridge for you to cross because they will analyze your application for all criteria, including age, including maybe the eligibility by country, maybe where you want to study, those questions in the application form. So once they find one thing that puts you out of the eligibility criteria, just know your application will not proceed to the next stage. The same thing with the word limits. If your application, for example, the <clears throat> personal statement exceeds the word limits, they may not allow you, the ATS may not allow your application to go to the next stage. That's how important it is to follow simple instructions like word limits. So within these word limits, tell them these things, these are the things they wanted. And I have tried to see, guide you, how do you structure these five things to appear in your uh, personal statement? Your background. Your background may not necessarily be your family background here, but you as an individual, what can you tell them to know about you as a background of yours? So I, I in this structure of the essay, I thought this would be more of an introductory paragraph. Talk about yourself briefly. Oh, I have completed senior four, maybe senior six, or I am maybe doing some part-time part job, or I'm you know employed, I'm self-employed, doing a bit of business, and maybe um, just talk about yourself. What background do you want them to know about yourself? Some of your hobbies, some of your skills that you have, uh, how you spend your leisure time, and so on. One paragraph. Then the next thing they said you should tell them about is your family. So this to me becomes the body of your essay. And therefore the first point in your body of the essay should be about your family. What do you want them to know about your family? Are you the first, the second, the last born in your family of how many brothers and sisters, maybe the level of education of your parents, um, maybe if among you, the brothers and sisters, uh, nobody has achieved uh, tertiary education or university education, uh, maybe your family in terms of income, uh, a few things you want to talk about, maybe where you stay. For example, South Sudan has been going through so much conflict. Maybe your family is relocated somewhere and you are somewhere. It's just something brief about your family. That is first point in the body. Second point in the body, according to the instructions, is your life experiences. Life experiences for South Sudanese, for example, will, will be probably cutting across. If somebody decides to talk about the wars, that one may be cutting across, but there should be individual specific life experiences that you really want to bring out that can either show them that this is somebody worth uh, supporting or is somebody who is very uh, industrious or can help himself you know, <clears throat> that kind of thing. So share a few life experiences here. Again, do not exaggerate any point. Do not fabricate them. Make them real, true life stories about yourself that you think will be selling your essay. Why you chose to study the particular field you are studying. This should be the third point. So currently I am a senior six graduate who is uh, maybe part-timing as volunteering as a primary school teacher. And uh, I am interested in pursuing a bachelor's degree in education, okay? Uh, maybe biology and, and, and chemistry, you know? And then you have to state why you want to study that point. Maybe by volunteering, I have developed passion for, for teaching and I want to become a professional teacher at the secondary school level, something like that, but you have to justify with it much more than what I've just stated. So why do you want to study what you are saying you want to study? whether it is education, medicine, nursing, uh, maybe it is uh, engineering, whatever. 
<clears throat> whatever you're thinking about, you should have a justification for the choice. Lastly, why you believe you should be favorably considered for this scholarship. This is going to be your conclusive paragraph and you have to make it so enticing to them that they will really say, okay, can we push this person to the next, <clears throat> sorry, to the next stage? There are things the WMI wants to hear about their prospective uh, scholars. I mentioned them in the previous uh, presentation. Things to do with the volunteer, volunteering to do work or you know, service in the community and so on and so forth. If you were able to cite some examples, for example, in your life experiences paragraph, you know, you would be able to say, you know, I feel if I get this scholarship and I achieve this level of education, I will be able to do much more in this and that and that kind of uh, situation or, or, or service in the community. And this should be able to lead to this kind of results, both for me, for the community, and maybe for WMI. You must make sure they get a sense that, oh, this person has thought through that if they really get the scholarship, okay? And I mean that they really deserve the scholarship. Like I said the other time, always over a thousand applicants, thousands of applicants. So you should stand out before you go to the next stage. So that should be about your personal statement essay. Unless there's a question, I'm moving to the next thing. But if there is, <clears throat> either raise your hand or drop in the chat box. Sorry, I'm having some bit of throat irritation somehow. Okay, so if that is that, let's move to is a question. If you have a question, you may note it down and ask later. Now, the is a question is your Legu. opportunity to share. Yes, Legu. Legu. someone has a hand up. No, I I just my a simple, a simple concern. If call again lower <coughs> lower the speed. Good because you are taking notes. I should lower the speed. Yeah, you are very fast. Oh man, that's how I talk, like a weaver. Yeah, but anyway, what have you missed here? I mean, in the personal statement, is it what have you missed? Uh, I will, I will, in your in your life life experience, I missed. Uh, uh, a family. I mean, in the family, family, family. Uh, mm -hmm. family, your family my family yes like yeah you, so you talked of uh, bring in the bag the the, the 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 bag the education of your parents then the status of what uh, is migration or displacement then the life i mean then uh, many actually i i missed in here yeah but i want to warn everyone in this call not to do exactly the way i'm saying I'm just throwing oh, no. in ideas, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly the way I'm saying. I'm just throwing in ideas and suggestions of what you yeah. could capture under yeah. your family. You get it? Okay. So it doesn't have to be the same wording or the same approach that I have, but those are things likely you can tell about your family. For example, also, if you are married and uh, maybe you now have children, that is your own family you want to talk about, you can as well talk about it, but you can also talk about your wider family, I mean your brother, sisters, father, mother, and so on. So it shouldn't be strictly what I have said that you should write, okay? Yeka, are we okay? Yes. Yeah, yes. so those are just a few things to open your mind on what more you can talk about your family, okay? Right, so let's go to the question essay. It is said that it is your opportunity to share your ideas and feelings regarding issues impacting you and your community. I'll be honest with you guys. This question is a just tests. Are you a kind of person who identifies problems in the community and tries to solve them? This is basically what they're looking out for in you. Are you that kind of person who can identify a problem in the community and do something about it? Or are you the laissez faire, like the to whom it may concern kind of person who just, you know, moves along? There may be so many things if you think through this question in your village, in your community where you live, there may be so many things that you will feel need to be addressed, right? Just think through where you are now. 
maybe you have been passing by this morning, maybe to church or back from church or wherever you have just moved today, yesterday or any day. And then you noted something that you really think needs to be changed. These are the kinds of things this question wants you to write about. So if you were granted a thousand dollars, number one, <clears throat> what community improvement would you organize? So again, in the structure of an essay, I thought this should be the first paragraph, introduction. I'll show you what kind of information should be captured in that essay. Uh, initially, I thought that this was actually more of a grant proposal writing kind of question, but it's not. I later on confirmed it's not. It's any other essay, like any other essay you write it, but the content of the essay should be similar to what you would write in a grant proposal, okay, where you're applying for a grant or funding. So I'll show you what that content might include. It may not be exhaustive, but if you are able to mention some of the things I, I have in the slide ahead, you might be able to put up a very strong question essay. So like I said, think through your community, wherever you are. What community improvement would you organize if you had $1,000 given to you for that? You can think of something that is a one-off activity. Once it is completed, that's it. Or you can think of something that can become a continuous activity as long as it is possible to fund it or to kick it off with the only $1,000. So I'll show you what you should capture in the intro uh, paragraph on this question. Second point you need to write about in this essay is who would benefit and how? Who would benefit and how? Who is the target group of that activity? Can somebody mute? Thank you. Who is the target group of that activity that you have identified? Please mute yourselves. And if you want to talk, you can always put up your hand. Thank you. So the second bullet here is who would benefit and how? You have seen issues impacting you and your community. Okay? And you want to improve those issues. Who are the target population? So how will they benefit? In my thinking, this would be the body of the essay. You can describe, you can discuss the first point and the second point within the who and how. The third point is how would you measure the success of the activity? This is monitoring and evaluation kind of question. For every activity you want to implement to solve a problem, you must have targets you want to achieve. You must have goals that will tell you at the end that yes, my implementation was successful and what I wanted to change has really changed. So whatever idea you're thinking about, you should already be having ways of measuring it, measuring your activity, the success of your activity. So you need to have indicators and how to qualify the indicators that for this indicator, if I get this much, it is success for me. But if I fall here, then it is failure. So you need to describe as well, how would you measure? You might want to come up with the two or three indicators that you can describe how you will measure them. Then you conclude. So again, you write it as an essay, not as a grant proposal, but the content may be of a grant proposal. So uh, like I said, this is just testing your business or funding proposal writing skills, okay? Make sure again it is, 500 to 1,000 words, please not more than that. And here you do not include pictures or other things like you would do in a grant or uh, business proposal, okay? So these are just examples from me and do not again think these are the best or the final, okay? For example, in the introduction, what was the question asking? What community improvement would you organize with that $1,000? These ones are just rough ideas I thought about them. Now, for example, where I, I say I live and the location is somewhere here, you can rearrange these questions, I mean, these points such that you begin with them, for example, where you live. The example I have given here for where I live is uh, Luanda, somewhere in Siaya County in Kenya. So I can start by saying, okay, the, the point I want to discuss or the issue I have identified is COVID-19 community health awareness. This will be what I will do as community health awareness program. The issue here may be what 
increasing numbers, number of what COVID-19 cases in Luanda, for example. So that is the issue I have identified. And what I want to do is community health awareness on COVID-19, okay? So who will I target? The elderly, community members with the chronic illnesses. Why? Because most times these are the people who get severe cases of COVID-19 infection. Um, the location I've already started with it, okay? And then the total cost, you may not want to go into details of breaking it down in the, in the EC. <clears throat> But what they have said is you have been provided with that amount of money. However, if you have specific things you will, you are sure you will spend on, for example, in this awareness, maybe I will need uh, refreshment for people who gather. Maybe I'll need some uh, transport for people who have come and maybe transport re refund and so on. Those are a few basic costs of the, of the idea that you will mention, okay? So you need to know when do you want to start and when do you want to end this awareness program of yours? Okay, so this is, I consider that basically more of um, the introductory part. Like I said here, the who and, and who will benefit and how should be the first and second points in your body. Again, like I said, you should just rearrange your ideas the, the way you best think it can flow in the structure of an essay. So you could still play, play around with these bullets and then take some points somewhere. Then you have stated the, the target population and so on. You still need to, to give a backup of why. Usually in giving a backup of why you want to do something, you need a needs assessment done, okay? Or you could just provide a, a literature review, brief literature review. So I have put here like needs assessment. Maybe this would be your uh, first point or second point in the body. For example, you just want to answer why this activity. You must justify. You just can't say, okay, so in uh, maybe Munuki block A in Juba, I'm doing uh, maybe a uh, hand washing campaign. And yet there may be nothing really that needs you to do that kind of activity. You should be able to identify activities that really matter to the community. And when you do something about them, the community benefits. So for example, this is what I wrote. The COVID-19 pandemic has ravaged the world and caused a million and a half uh, deaths, I think I missed a word here, since its outbreak in late 2019. Where did I get this information from? I need to cite it. This is just for example. Available data shows that majority of the deaths occur among the elderly and people with chronic illnesses such as diabetes, hypertension, and asthma. I need to cite this information. This cannot be from my head. This is something I likely read from somewhere, okay? Then I came on and said, local data in Seaya County shows that the elderly and people with chronic illnesses make up about 20% of the total population. Again, I am narrowing it down to the county I said I live in, Seaya. So I need to also state the source. Maybe it is Seaya County uh, Bureau of Statistics or something, okay? But it is saying that 20% of the population there are elderly people or people living with a chronic illness. You see it's a big percent of the population in Syria, 20%. So you can do something about that. So about 70% of whom are in Luanda. So this 20% in Syria, 70% of them are in this Luanda village where I live. At present, 95% of COVID-19 admissions in Syria County Hospital are of elderly and people with it chronic illnesses. So you see the problem of being elderly and having chronic illness. 95% of cases in the hospital are this type of people. In Luanda, people are indulging many congregate activities, such as marriages, funerals, and church programs since the lifting of the COVID-19 restrictions, rendering the at-risk populations more vulnerable because they do not implement preventive measures. Now, do you see the problem? This is actually the problem and what I have seen that I want to solve through awareness program, okay? Implementing this activity will improve use of COVID-19 preventive measures and lead to 80% reduction in COVID-19 among the elderly and the people with the chronic illnesses. So I have tied it up, the story I have, what I have observed, the issue in the community and what I need to do about it. And if I do, what the outcome would be. This is a very nice uh, 
uh, in my thinking, this is a very nice paragraph to just justify why you have chosen to do the activity you have chosen. Then, what will be the goals of this activity? Remember, SMART. Goals must always be SMART. They are specific, not just and indeterminate, like you cannot pinpoint, they must be specific. If they're looking for A, they must not go to look for C. They must be measurable. They must be attainable, okay? Relevant and time bound. That is SMART. So you can set maybe two to three SMART goals that you know, if you describe them, they will be able to even help you degenerate, to generate your what you are. Uh, monitoring indicators. For example, one goal of this activity is to conduct at least 10 weekly meetings in a quarter. Remember, I had put my, my what, start date and end date, say from April 13th to July 12th. So I gave myself three months, okay? Three months to implement this activity. So I said goal number one will be at least 10 weekly meetings in a quarter. They may be weekly meetings or awareness, sessions to say. You could change this to awareness, for example. In a quarter, there must be at least 10. You know that a quarter will have about 12 weeks, but you want to have at least 10 weekly. Goal number two is to distribute. So here, this is very specific. You're talking about weekly meetings, not anything else. You want 10 of them in a quarter. This is the measurability, and it is possible. You can achieve this. And you have specified the time is within a quarter, not a, not a month. It's, it's a whole quarter. So this is a smart goal. To distribute two face masks to at least 300 elderly persons and people with the chronic illnesses in three months, okay? So your target is elderly and the chronic illness people, 300 of them, each going with at least two face masks, again, within the three months, because you have the money. $1,000 can get many more masks. So this could be your two goals you want to, uh, to, to reach. Now, activities to be carried out, so you can list. The activities should really come from the goals, okay? So to undertake that, that will help you realize the above goals. If you want, you can estimate in the activities how much, for example, the meeting may require uh, refreshments or re uh, transport refund. You can say maybe about, uh, maybe $10 per meeting, per, per weekly meeting. So that's $100 gone out of your 1,000. So you can do estimated costs if you like, the timeline of that activity if you like, and then the deliverable. So those meetings, what will be the end result of those meetings, okay? Maybe people will sign some attendance sheets that they have attended their awareness, and then uh, your messages, maybe you get feedback from them. Those are the deliverables of each activity or meeting you, you have had. Sometimes, you can do such activities in collaboration with the, the local authorities. It will be good to mention. But if you think it is something you can do on your own, you also will just say, this one I'm going to do by myself. But if you think you want to call the local authorities, for example, in, in South Sudan, the Sheikh Hela, you want to involve the Sheikh Hela, and then maybe you want to involve the local church in the, in the implementation, you need to also bring that out as part of what? Discussing your implementation strategy. This is the how part of it, actually. How do you do it? So if you are able to mention this, maybe with a bit of what they will bring. The local church, for example, will provide you space and furniture for, for your meetings. Mm -hmm. The Sheikh Hela, for example, will help you with mobilizing the people, the target population you want. So this is collaboration, partnership, and then each one has their roles. So this is all about the how, okay? So if you want to talk about sustainability, after the three months, what will happen? People will forget these health messages. So how will you sustain this? Maybe you will hand it over to the church as their routine program so that every Sunday they announce about COVID-19 prevention. This one may be something you think about the sustainability if you want. If you don't want, you can leave it open. So all this is more about the how do you want to do it, the goals you want to achieve, and then maybe the, um, the indicators, okay? so. Uh, actually, the indicators came in here last because this was the last bullet here. How would you measure the success of the activity? So measuring the success of the activity is now the, maybe the third point or the last point, if you want, indicators. 
what indicators will you develop? For example, I have given some here, number of weekly meetings held in the first quarter. So I said, I, in my goal, I said 10 meetings in a quarter. By the end of the quarter, how many meetings will I have held? Those become my measured uh, performance. So I'll know whether I've achieved this goal or not. And like I said, maybe attendance, meeting minutes are documented, and then you can be able to count how many of these are in your drawer. Then the number of face masks delivered to elders and people with chronic illnesses in three months. Remember, we said two masks for at least 300 people. You intend to get to distribute about 600 face masks. How many will you have distributed by then? So this is simply how you describe the what the M and E, the measurement, I mean the monitoring and evaluation to measure the success of your uh, idea. And then you conclude. You can really draw the conclusion from whatever we have discussed above, or just put anything else you want to tie up the whole thing, and uh, you should be able to really conclude your um, question easy. It is important you first think through what you want to write in the question essay. Don't get for yourself something very complicated. For example, you want to talk about climate change in, in, in South Sudan or in Africa. This, this is not going to work for a thousand dollar kind of grant that they will give you. So be simple, come down to practical things in your locality. This is also another thing that will make your essay different from somebody's essay elsewhere but try to make sure you are as convincing as possible. Let them see through your essay that this person can handle this money and implement an activity and can succeed. This is the essence of the question essay. Again, it must be in the essay structure. Bida, I think, let me pause here a bit. Before I go to the recommendation guidelines, does anybody have some comment? question, clarification to be to be given, or any feedback just regarding the essays. Anybody? Yes, Ganmai. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for for this very richful lecture that you did. I really enjoyed it though. There are some areas that I see as if there is a need for me at least to go through it a little bit. So I asked in the chat box in case if this will be shared or maybe if there's possibility that we can be able to go through it because listening to it just will never help unless if you go through it again and again, seeing it, reading it, that's where it can be able to guide you before we come to you so that you'll be whatever we, we, we ride on. I'm just feeling if it will be possible for you to share it with us. Thank you. Welcome. Are you in the WhatsApp group? Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, so uh, we are recording this session. Um, the link will be shared. It will be actually much better if you watch it again because it will be like another class repeating. So it will be much better for you to watch again. Uh, however, I think I can still share these slides, although revising the slides might not be as uh, detailed as, as I explained. But thank you. Uh, oh, it's yeah. okay. The recording will be shared in the WhatsApp is also good. Sure, it will be. Any other feedback before I proceed? Okay, if there's no other feedback, let's move on. I hope you will really be now competent to write your personal essays and uh, question essays. Letters of recommendation, please. Letters of recommendation I mentioned make up one of the most important parts of your application that will really weigh a lot to, 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 the, to making their decision to consider you for, for this scholarship. There are these guidelines they have provided in the application form. Letters should be written within a year of the application submission. So if you have had a letter written for, for any other application, maybe for scholarship also last year, as long as it was written from the 2nd of March last year up to this time, it is still within a year of the application submission. This application will be submitted latest 1st of March this year. So any letter written between 2nd of March last year, okay, is it still considered valid but of course the more recent your application i mean your your 
recommendation letter, perhaps the better, because they will know that this is a recent information about you. A whole year is a long time for you to remain the same as you were last year, okay? So there should be a lot that has improved, changed about you, that you are, the person recommending you should be speaking about current you, other than one year old or one year back you. The recommender cannot, please note this very well, cannot be a family member of your of yourself, the applicant. You cannot go to a family member to recommend you. Include the full name of the applicant. So this is to the recommender. I am writing your application. I must include your full name as you write it on your application as well. Indicate how long you have known the applicant, 10 years, five years, one year. I have to indicate if I'm recommending. Describe the capacity and nature in which you have known the applicant. Have I known you as your supervisor, maybe at workplace? Have I known you as your teacher, maybe in school or class or institute? Have I known you as a, as a what? Professional colleague? Just I need to state yeah, the capacity and the nature of us knowing each other because the capacity might determine how much I know about you that I should reflect in the letter. Most effective letters are not less than 400 words, nor more than 1,000 words. Again, you need to tell your, the person writing your recommendation letter. If they write less than 400 words, that may not be considered effective. But if they write more than 1,000 words, again, may be considered too wordy and not effective. Basically, I just put this by myself. Most recommendation letters are just one to two pages, not more than that. And when you write on the Word, uh, Word document with the right font size of maybe 12, um, usually by the end of a page, you are around 500 words something. So one to two pages basically brings you to about a thousand words. Please remind whoever is writing your letter to keep it around there. Provide your letter on official stationery. If you are working, I mean, if you if you are a recommender, the person writing your recommendation is working with an organization, with the government, with any institution that has a letterhead, I mean, um, a headed paper, they should write your recommendation on that headed paper, not just any other plain paper. That's what they mean by that bullet. Um, so if I am recommending you, what are the things I should state about you? things I should write about you, okay? Discuss why the applicant would be a strong candidate for this specific scholarship. What are the things that make an applicant a strong candidate? Someone who is passionate about working with his or her community. And I remember saying this earlier in this call, that your essays should really bring out evidence that you are such a person, okay? And committed to helping improve the quality of life within his or her country. So if the recommender, the person writing the recommendation can cite specific examples of how you are able to do this, that will be very excellent, okay? So maybe Yeka is, I have known Yeka for 10 years now uh, as maybe a church member, assuming I'm his uh, pastor at the local church. And uh, I have seen a lot of passion in Yeka for community service, for example, okay? Then I cite. That is what they want to see in the recommendation letters. Discuss the applicant's personal characteristics, ability to work with others in a team, leadership skills, and communication skills. Very important. So regardless of the, um, the nature of relationship we have with you, if I'm recommending you, I should be able to speak to your personal characteristics. What kind of person are you? How easy is it for you to work with others in a team? Are you that flexible enough? What leadership skills have I seen in you? I should point them out. And communication skills, of course, very important. Comment on the applicant's proposed plan of study at the tertiary level and the past experiences witnessed by you that may relate to the applicant's aptitude, retained interest, completion of a degree in the subject matter and benefit to given to society upon graduation. Now, let me, give another scenario that maybe I'm the head teacher of a certain primary school and uh, you have come to volunteer to teach after senior four. And now you want to go and study education at the bachelor's level. I can speak to this very clearly and very well, right? 
as I write your recommendation, I can speak to it. So I will be able to say you have been this kind of a volunteer teacher, okay? And I believe when you achieve your tertiary level education, you should be able to go on to achieve many more things like this and that and that, both for you and for the community. But as a, as a volunteer teacher, how good are you at teaching, you know? How apt are you? How well do you know the matter and present it? Mm -hmm. how, how, how much interest do you actually have in teaching that I have been able to identify? I should be able to comment on it. And then of course, whether you are that competent person and, and really able to complete a university bachelor's degree study, for example, okay? So those are the things the person recommending should speak about. Um, so from the recommender's perspective, again, how effective is the applicant in establishing and maintaining relationships? To what extent does the applicant possess the traits of motivation and persistence? Is this person easily demotivated, easily discouraged? What if he goes to the university under WMI scholarship and maybe is frustrated in one thing or another and gives up? You know, the person should be able to comment about the level of motivation this person always shows. Is there any reason to doubt the applicant's diligence as a student and his or her honesty? Unfortunately, most recommendation letters, people tend to lie, people tend to make things look nice just because of maybe humanity or brotherhood so that so-and-so gets what you are recommending them for. But it is actually important that whoever is recommending is honest. And if you want me to recommend you and I know that you have this problem and I mention it, do not feel bad about it and do not actually blame me, do not hate me. Rather, what is important is, have I discussed it with you? If I have, then you need to only change it and improve from it. That's the, your, the work of somebody recommending. So they should be very honest about your diligence and honesty. Share documented evidence of the applicant's achievements in academics, leadership, or community service. If I have, for example, the community service uh, that I said somebody uh, carried out or you know, participated in, if I have evidence, I can share that because I'm recommending. Does the applicant have any unique competent competencies, talents or leadership abilities? Again, it's good to mention. Uh, what motivates this person? What excites him or her? Similar to what is up there. Are there any specific family or community circumstances of which we should be aware? This now comes to detail of how much that I know about you, okay? You may be this very excellent person and um, really family-wise, you are struggling and I know that I can bring that at this point here. Okay, that is about your recommendation letters, who should write it, how they write it, what they should say. I, I know those resources are there, they have been shared. You should already have identified who will write these letters for you. Share with them these uh, recommendations on how to write your, your recommendation letter as well, and then let them be aware of it, okay? Now, we will go to look through the application in a minute, the PDF, which I have here. But again, remember that if you intend to send your application by, by post office, this is the address, but you will need to do this maybe three weeks or four weeks before the deadline. I will not encourage this if you have access to good internet and you can apply online, it will be easier. Remember these deadlines, it opened, the application opened on December 1 last year, it will end and close on, December, on March 1st this year. Between April and July, it will be review of applications and so on and so forth. And I think of recent, they added uh, uh, interviews. So some people who may be seen to be successful or progressing may be called for interviews. That experience is new because um, I told you earlier that I'm a very old scholar. During my time, there was no interview. So um, if somebody progresses for the interview stage, maybe you can let us know and then we'll go through what you might expect. And it's, it's likely to happen between again, April and July. August 1st is usually when announcement of scholarships happen. And uh, I mean, those who are, who are accepted as the scholars, so scholarship recipients will be announced. And then usually by September, you should be able to receive your funds to start your education. 
if you have not yet started already. Just timelines for you to remember. Again, these resources are here. If you want to download the application form, this is the link. If you want to download the information sheet, there's also the information sheet about the scholar program. Can tell you more than I've been telling you in these two calls. Frequently asked questions. Anybody wanting to become a scholar may ask, they are here. And then the guidelines for the recommendation letters that I went through briefly are here. So you should be able to download all this from these uh, links. Before we go to going through the, the application question, uh, paper or the application form, any questions? Bida, are you there? Do, we, do I have anything to comment on? I don't see any hand up. I'm here. Let me check through the, the question, but I don't see anything serious here. Sure. Yeah, I don't see anything serious. You can just uh, proceed. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, any question? Or oh, I go through the application form. Someone is asking how many recommendation letters are required. Yeah, that is on the application form. There are two. Okay, that's fine then. Let's go through the application form. So I will stop sharing the slides and project the application form. Um, let me just look it up. Okay. What if you submit more than two? I'm not sure if there will be space for a third one. We'll see in the in the okay. Maybe before we go to the to the application form actually. Let me first project the website. Somebody was asking a question. Was it Yeka Okun? Do you people see my screen? Can somebody confirm? Yes, she's yes. appearing. Very good. So this is the WMI uh, website, okay? I've gone all the way to the scholar application tab. Um, and this is what is there. You can read if you want as much as you want. How to apply, a lot of things here and so on and so forth. Even the links, the resources I was telling you about are all here. You can download them from there. But what I wanted us to come to is apply here. Okay. And uh, when you click apply here, See, the answer is here, two recommendation letters, like I said, and this is very important, okay? And that's why they provided the guidelines there. So when you click on apply here, it brings you to this page, which I already had come to earlier. So you can read the introduction if you have the time and the bundles, uh, the same information, when it opened, when it will end, and so on and so forth, selection criteria. We talked about all this, I guess, already. The ideal candidate, Okay, and so on and so forth. Now, what is important in this page is begin. Okay, submit by Thursday, March 2nd, this time. Okay, just maybe due to time zone differences, it has gone to the 2nd of March. However, remember their time there, it is 1st of March. Okay, so this is estimated time to complete. This is about two hours and five minutes and you have about 153 questions to complete. So if you say you want to begin the application, let me see what happens. I have not tried this before. Just to try to answer the other colleague who asked the question. So it's still loading. Hmm? You need to have good internet and uh, yeah, so it has loaded they would just, they went, I mean the, the badge or the, logo for WMI, I don't know if it didn't show up, it looked faint. So this is the page for you. You start with your given name, family name, and then of course your email. This is creating your profile. Somebody who asked it earlier. This is creating your profile. For example, if I start here and say Leju, um, and then, it's 
So I'm not going to continue with this. I'm just showing you. Let's say I save this information. Do I need parental consent? Okay. Because you are under 13, you must receive parental consent. Where is that information? Oh, I did not even confirm the email. Okay. So you see some of these things. I have I have got complaints from some people saying the, the, the application portal is not working. That's not true. Okay. So setting a password and then you can, okay. So I confirm that I am at least 13 years old and agree to terms. I didn't see this. So let me confirm. And then I put my password. Okay. So it has met the characteristics. Okay. One special character, which is any of these ones, they have listed at least one uppercase letter that is a capital letter, one lowercase or small letter, and then uh, at least one number, and it must have at least eight characters. So, so 12 plus is recommended, but eight and above is allowed. So this is my password. So then I will say, save it, okay? I'm creating my profile. So every time I come back, you see, so register successfully, saved successfully. If I want them to remember my password, I will say save. If I don't want, I will say never. So you see that 5% already I have completed the form 5%. Then now let's get to know you. So these are the details I already entered there, right? Okay, so I want to just go to the next page. Okay, these are the same details I've entered there. So if I say now I go to the next page, what is there? Okay. So that information has already been saved once again. So here we are talking about the eligibility. Remember I said in the last month's session, you must be 35 or below by March 1st, okay? So if you put your date of birth here, such that by the end of February, you're already 36, my dear, don't try because you will just not pro progress. And of course your, your national ID is required also. So it will still reflect, but if you're, birthday is maybe March the 2nd, the 3rd, and, and 4th and above, that will turn you 36. You are still considered eligible because by the deadline of this application, you are still considered 35 years, okay? So when you put that, that is one of the things they will use to screen your application, whether to progress to the next stage or not. So do you plan to study in these countries? If you say yes, just make sure, just be sure you will not progress because they clearly said they don't fund studies in these countries. You get it? So this is more of the online application. So I think we are just basically going through what I wanted us to go through in the PDF. So let's go through the PDF. And then when you go online, things will be the same and you know similar actually, and you can just fly within less than two hours and you would have completed. Uh, how many recommendation letters required? I've answered that. What if you submit more than two? I think I've answered that. Okay. So let's go to the PDF application form. I also hope you can see my screen. Now, this is all a lot of stories that if you downloaded this application form from the website, you need to take your time and read through on your own, just outside like no bundle needed once you have downloaded. So read through, understand so much of what is here, it will be helpful. Eligibility criteria is here, you see? Is 35 years old or under on, sorry, it's not March 1st, it is actually August 1st, 2023. So by the time they declare, uh, um, by the time they declare the next scholars, the selected scholars, you should still be 35 or younger. If you are already 36 by August 1st, you will not qualify. Again, like I said, it might be the eight years to screen you before even somebody reads your story, okay? So additional details go through, go through. Um, all this we have talked about really, the requirements. See, I, I, I tried filling out this. So if you come to, um, was it in tools? I think it was in tools. Or was it where? So if you go to tools and then you look for, there was somewhere I got where I can include text, okay? Yeah. I think it was in, so you just can edit the PDF. If you don't want, you can copy this, yes. So you come to sign and then you say add text. You can copy all this 
or convert it to a Word document so that it's easier to type in. If you type in a Word document, it is easier. And then you just go online and you just be copying and pasting. So my given name, all these other details, I have typed them, for example, in, in, in a Word document. And then when I go online, I am having the, the, the Word document before me on the other side and then the online application on the other side. So I just copy and paste field by field. It will be faster. You will not need the 125 minutes to complete this. So I started this, for example, a Jew family name is Joyce, email and that. Assuming that I'm 1970, I'm a born of 1970, that means I don't even qualify. Here, like I said, eligibility must be a no. If you want to study in these countries, don't even try applying. Are you seeking this scholarship for a master's or PhD, please? It's a no. If you say yes, you don't qualify. These are eligibility questions. So they will use them to screen you out. Have you already completed a bachelor's degree? If it is a yes, you don't qualify. So this scholarship is for people still looking for their first degree, bachelor's degree in life. Additional information, what city do you live in? For example, uh, Mundri. Why is it not typing? I don't know. But you just type what city you are living in. I don't think I need to take time on that. Um, family member contact information, somebody they can contact for your information if they need more, and you should put the relationship of that person to you. So you put the family member's name, are they your mother, father, sister, uncle, whatever you specify here, if it is not mentioned here. Uh, where does your family member live? This particular one, where are they living? Are they in the camps, in which country, or where you include? and their phone number and email address, just contact information. Now, proposed program of study. They have repeated that they don't sponsor people in those countries, they don't sponsor masters or PhD, okay? But they will do it for diploma or bachelor's degree, including for medicine and surgery. So what program or subject do you want to study? You put it there. Where do you plan to study? By now, you should be having an idea of which institution you want to join. So in which place is the institution? Is it in Juba? Is it in Kampala, Nairobi? Is it in wherever? The name of the school, the city, the country, the website, URL or the link of the website um, of the school. Then how long will your study take from start to finish? If it is Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery, it may be not less than five years, depending on where you go to, okay? Five years, five and a half, other countries, six years. So you have to in indicate that in terms of years. What date will all did, you, did your studies begin? So if you have already joined university and you want to apply to this to supplement your tuition and other sources of income to finish in a peaceful way, then you just put the date you started your course. But if you are yet to join, then you also indicate when your next, the, the first semester is likely to begin. So you just put that. What is your current enrollment status? You are still applying, you are not yet accepted. Maybe you are already accepted and you have an uh, admission form. You are currently enrolled and already attending classes or you begin program of study, but you took a dead year or you are no longer taking classes for whatever reasons, okay? So that's the status. If you are currently enrolled, then how many years have you completed? So they will compare with the total number of years for your course and determine how many more to go. When do you expect to finish your required course? This is for somebody who has already started, for example. Um, so, and even the one who is yet to apply or to be admitted, you can still say, I am going to study a four year course in the university. And if I start, for example, in September 2023, I should be through by August 2020, what, six or seven? 2026 or 2027, maybe. So you just put there. Family background, are you married? Put your status. Highest level of education or schooling that your spouse has completed. So here, if you put single, I don't expect this question to pop up for you because you are single. But if you put married, widowed or divorced, you are likely to have this so that they know your spouse, what level of education, highest level they achieved. And then the spouse's employment status, average current monthly income. The whole idea here is to determine, to assess whether in case their scholarship is not enough 
to fund your tuition, you have some other sources somewhere, maybe a spouse or a family member, okay? If you have any children, you put how many? And then if you have any dependents who are also in your care, you put them how many, okay? Are your parents alive? If it is a yes, I expect more questions to come in like the level, highest level of education they have achieved. I think even for a no, it's possible to ask these questions. So you will just see which one pops up. Uh, your mother's employment status, average current salary, income, uh, and then also the same for the father. So they just want to know more about you and your family and any other potential sources of income. Your financial resources now, you as the applicant, okay? Why should continue with the website application? Uh, it's only for the health sector. I'm not understanding what Paul and Yeka you are saying. Um, maybe you can ask by raising your hand and you, you speak up. So your financial resources, uh, do you have any prospects for employment part-time or otherwise while you are in school or between semesters where you can earn income towards your educational costs? This question is similar to asking about your spouse and your family members income. It's similar to, because it helps them assess the ability, financial ability for you to continue your education, even if what they give you would be less than what you need for your studies. You see, maximum they, have, they say they give is $3,000, but they do not usually award that much of $3,000. So if they provide you less yearly, okay, is there any way you can make up the difference? So it depends on what you answer there and here. It is always good to make sure that there is some source. If not from you, maybe from an aunt, an, an, an uncle, or maybe your father, mother, there is something. That's what they want to see, that there's something somewhere, especially if your tuition is exceeding $3,000 per year. They want to see that you can cover up the gaps. Do not exaggerate, please. This highlighted point here, we ask that you complete the following section with honesty. Students selected to receive this scholarship are chosen based on many aspects, not just the financial need. So do not make your picture look so grim in this section so that you are selected. It does not always cover the full cost of tuition and associated educational expenses. It depends really on the country, the university, the tuition there, you know, it all depends. So you will now list all sources of income or support that you, um, the amount you expect to receive, okay? To supplement what WMI may give you, you list them. If you have any government loans, any other kind of loans, if you have been awarded any other scholarships also, other than the WMI one, you may need to also inform them about it. Um, maybe you have a job, family member, savings, all those are potential sources of other income to supplement your education. Yeah, so now if you have received another application, I mean, scholarship, you mentioned it there. Um, your academic costs, so you will provide your best estimate of the costs of your, for your academic program for one academic year, not two semesters, not three semesters, one academic year. What is the total cost, academic cost? You can put your local currency, whether ACE, SP, Kenyan shillings, Uganda shillings, whichever. And the date you have exchanged it, what is the, ex uh, the exchange rate and the date? So month, day, year. Please, you need to take note of how the American people write their dates. They begin with the month, the day, the year. For example, today's date would be 01, which is January 22, the date, the day 22nd, and then 2023. So you should always make sure you are following that format because it can confuse them. If you write it the British way, for example, which begins with the day and then the month and the year. Please enter estimated costs in your local car institution here. Okay. Um, and then any other fees that may not be tuition, but maybe lab fees, uniform, whatever they ask for. You put their accommodation costs, you put their meals, you put their books and school supplies, if any. Uh, then you enter the estimated cost in US dollars here. Again, for tuition, for lab fees. So you will use the exchange rate that you have quoted somewhere there to now exchange each of these items and then the equivalent in USD. You just put it there. That is your costs. Now, about you. 
Again, they say is a chance for you to tell them more about your future, what you hope to do, which will help them learn more about you, your future and what you hope to do. Very important to them. Please provide a short answer on the lines provided. What do you plan to do after you complete your education, including where you hope to live? What do you plan to do? So again, I mentioned here, be, space, be smart. Please don't talk too many things. They said a few lines. Answer on the lines provided, a few lines. Be smart in your future uh, or, or career goals. Make them smart, okay? Make them smart so, so that they will know. I think I missed something here. Specific, measurable, attainable, achievable, realistic, and then time bound. Okay, time bound is down there, yes. So whatever you are describing that you want to do after you complete your education, be specific, make it measurable, make it attainable, something you really, somebody can read and say, yeah, yeah this is possible. When he completes his uh, Bachelor of Education, I think he can become a, a deputy head teacher if that is what you want to do, for example. So be smart. Um, this is the example I've given. For example, be a classroom teacher in three years time in the DRC, enroll for a postgraduate study in business management at the University of Kinshasa in five years time. Simple statements to the point, and they are all smart. Specific, you want to be a classroom teacher and it's, it's possible, it's attainable. Three years time, you have, you have put time bound to it, okay? Like that. So do you know any current or past WMI scholars? For those of you who are in this call, of course you should say yes, and you can always mention my name here, but they will ask, please provide the names of the scholar and what your relationship is. I don't think I know any of you here physically. So I, I suggested that the best relationship you might write is WMI scholarship mentor, something like that. I don't know if it will work because I don't think I know any of you physically or we are related in any way. So if you can quote me and put that, I feel it might be sufficient. Have you applied for a WMI scholarship in the past? It depends, I don't know about each of you. So it may be a yes or no. Uh, if you selected yes, then you will have to provide the years you, pro you applied. Uh, education history, you need to put your primary school name, where you studied it, the year you completed it, for example. These are not real things, basically, but I just use them for example, okay? So if you're able to fill this form, like I said, in a Word document, now you go there, uh, you say year completed, you just copy this, and then you go and paste in the online application form. I don't need to take much time there. Moving on to work employment history, similar. They're asking you to provide information on your current or past employment. If you do not have any current or past employment, you may skip this section. So it depends. Uh, if you are currently employed or in the past you were employed, you just put the name of the company or organization, whether it was a part-time or full-time or casual labor kind of employment, when you started it, when it ended, or if it is current, you just write current, current job or employment. Then a few lines of what you were doing, okay? Salary in US, USD. So please convert using current exchange rate you put there. Name of the company, this is now for a second employment, whether in the past, yeah, maybe in the past now, if you have a second employment, you also list that. I think they provide up to three. So this is the third here. Yeah, so you can describe up to three employment uh, uh, experiences, beginning with the current, going back for two more. Volunteer history, remember I said this over and over again. In this section, you will ask you, we will ask you to provide information on your volunteer history. If you do not have any volunteer history, again, you may skip this. Very important, do not fabricate any voluntary activities, please. But if you are sure, you have had one or two experiences voluntary, put them. If you don't have any volunteer experience at all, then make sure in your personal essay, it comes out very clearly what steps you are going to take and who you plan to do to show them that you will be committing yourself into volunteering. It's a very important thing WMI wants to see because at the end of the day, even as a scholar, they expect you to be doing voluntary work. 
and they require at least 100 hours of voluntary work in a year. Okay, I remember mentioning this in the past uh, session. So you will just fill in whatever you have volunteered with the name of the organization, the description of the responsibilities, when it is started, when it ended, total hours volunteered. So you estimate if you are volunteering maybe three hours per day and you did it for, for a month, maybe Monday to Friday. So you had about 20 or 22 days of volunteering, four hours a day. So that's about 80 or 88 hours. So you just estimate and you put it there, for example. So it depends how many organizations you have volunteered with. You can list also up to three. Finally, this is all that I've been taking you through from the beginning. So I started the application process from the end to, to, the, to the beginning because of the importance of these ECA questions. And I don't think I need to repeat myself on this. I have exhausted everything. Please remember the additional requirements, the documents required. And then, of course, here they say, be careful not to upload the same letter twice. If you do this, you will have submitted only one letter of recommendation and will be disqualified. So they only need two, please. Two, don't try to be smart and provide four or three. Uh, these are the things I've taken you through, what the person writing your recommendation letter should do and what they should include. Ladies and gentlemen, let me hear from you. Anybody with a question, comment? Oh, Esther, good afternoon. Can you hear me? KG, can you hear me? Esther KG, I can't, I can't hear anything. Are you talking, but you are muted or you are not talking? I don't see Vida in the call. Has he dropped? Okay. Maybe Esther is Bida, welcome back. You had dropped. Moses, you want to say something? Yes, Leju. Yes, Yeka. Yeah, you I, I asked you about because the, the, the cited example is about surgery and the and health. That's why I was. I mean, dealing in in, in health. That's why I was asking: is, Are you are we only dealing? I mean, are they giving the scholarship to to the healthy faculty, or is even education all the arts subject? All. Okay. All. You can study laws. You can study what whatever is really going to help you improve the community. They will support. Okay. You. Esther KG, can you hear me? I'm clocking on on thirty. I mean, I'm clocking on yeah, on July to thirty five. Am I qualified to apply? Yes. Yes, you are. Esther KG, are you there? Huh? Maybe some people don't hear me. Okay. So, is there any more comments from anybody? Questions? Lodu Emmanuel Lubang, I see you have unmuted. Do you want to say something? Paul, yes, the answer is yes. All developing countries, all developing countries are eligible. Studying in any of the developing countries is, is supported. Yes, Jack. Yes, yes, like uh, uh, yes. Yes, go ahead. Like I came later, and so my my uh, question is, let me say, when you are, uh, let me say you are, you are in any, like like in any another country like uh, Egypt. So is it possible for someone to apply there also? Egypt, uh, yeah. 
I don't know, is Egypt a developing country? I think so. But the, the point is really all, all over the developing world, they support. Okay, okay. Egypt is, Egypt is not considered a developed country, is it? So anyway, on their website, you can read more, but the, the, the yeah. description there is developing world. They will sponsor someone. Someone. Jacques, I uh, Okay, 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 thank you. Yeah, you can mute. Esther KG, mm -hmm. please you say something now. Can you hear me? Ah, I think Esther is somewhere. I don't know. Bida, you had dropped. Welcome back. James Allen, you are unmuted. Do you want to say something? Yes, yes, uh, Dr. Lojo. Good afternoon. Sorry. Good afternoon. Yeah, thanks so much for the very fruitful uh, presentation. And uh, thanks to the colleague also. Uh, I'm really very happy for this wonderful session today. Uh, just to be straightforward on my question, it is regarding like in section six on the application where relating to like filling the estimation in local costs and also convert it into USD. And I applied that one, but sometime later also they're asking to upload the, the instruction fee. And uh, it's become a bit uh, obstacle for getting this uh, uh, instruction fee. Like also they ask that you can check the university link or the website where you can uh, download from, from university site. But I've tried, I could not manage. And also they're still putting like a red line it's uh, blocking for you to go to the next uh, section. What so do you mean my by question is: how, you they, mean they or fee the, structure? The fee structure, yes, the fee structure, the document. So fee structure from is the, the tuition. Fee structure is the tuition the university asks from you, and uh, I don't know which university you are trying to apply to. Or yeah, you are I'm trying to apply for Juba University. In within Juba University. So if if Juba University website doesn't have the fee structure on it, if you cannot download it yes. from there, you might want to go physically to Juba University, maybe the academic registrar's office, and ask for the for the for the New Year's academic tuition fee structure. If they give you a hard copy, you can scan and upload that. Okay. I try I tried that one, but they were saying that they need official communication. Or the letter. What do you mean? So, yeah, they say they need to. I mean, of I mean, official uh, letter. You may drop the letter so that they may approve it and give it. That's what they say. Who said? And Who said? I'm University of Juba. That one. Yes, University of Juba. Oh, then that is a problem in in the country. Then in the university. Yeah, that's I what they say. I don't think that tuition fees should be should be something confidential that somebody has to tuition fee. Universities have it on their website. It is one thing that a, a prospective student has to consider before they join the university. You see, it is <laughs> so it is not there actually. It is not yeah. there. So who who was so asking for it? Who was so asking they, for it? The administrator there in uh, Juba University. Did you go to the office of the academic registrar? Yes, I went there. And well, then that one, I am not sure if I can help. Because it should be the office of the academic registrar. You say you want to apply yeah. for a scholarship. Yeah, the scholarship. That's the office, the yes. They are, the, they are the team. They are the one even requesting that uh, letter. And I'm but wondering, the letter will come from who? WMI will not give you any letter to just get for you uh, a tuition structure, fee structure, you know? They cannot do that. You get it? Okay. So maybe... Right. maybe I, will it try. Usually, I will try to drop the letter appear. to them. Have you been admitted or not yet? Not yet. And when do you expect decision on admission? Uh, on this medical uh, medical practice, like in medicine. I mean, when do you expect their decision on whether they have admitted you or not? When? When will you know uh, whether you are admitted or not? 
Yeah. I'm not sure. Sorry, can you put it clear this question? When will you know whether you have been admitted to do the course you want to do or you are not admitted? When will you know? So in so this we, regard, actually, yeah. because this, this is application process, I may not know that I will be admitted. I am asking about the University of Juba application. You want to study in University of Juba. I asked if you have been yes. admitted already or not. You said no. Then I'm not asking, yet, when, yeah. will you, when will you get admission form if you are admitted? When? Yeah, probably this year. Okay. So that one is going to probably go past the deadline for, for application for this scholarship. That means you have to find another way. Uh, I really don't know how to help. But if you if you fail in one office, you might want to try another office and another office. Maybe if at you want least, to study a medical least. course, you can go to the office of the dean of medicine or somewhere there. I, I really don't know well. I can't help there much. Okay, I will, I will try. I will try my best on that. Keep trying and get so, something to upload there. Okay, Jack's iPhone. Yeah. Jack's iPhone, your hand is up. Do you want to say something? Okay, it looks like that hand is by mistake up there. Esther KG, do you still want to say something? Maybe she is multitasking. Bida, I think from my side, it's over. Over to you. I've okay, somebody, great. Thank you so much. I've seen, I've seen somebody asking to be added in the WhatsApp group. Uh, okay, we usually do not add people. We just share the link and then you, you join. So um, I would advise the person that uh, here is the link. Please do join. We, we cannot save your number and then add you there. You have to join using the using the invite link. Okay. So this is a link for that person who is not in the WhatsApp group. Please use that link to be able to join the WhatsApp group. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, um, thank you so much, Leju, for the nice presentation that you have done, especially on your birthday. We would like to say happy birthday to you and many more years of life well lived. Oh, and uh, yeah, great. So guys, today is Leju's birthday. He's taken, it's, this is this is what appreciation because he has taken his time out of his birthday. He's throwing a party for us <laughs> to be <laughs> able to do this. So this is, this is something that is really, really lovely. Thank you so much. And uh, also for addressing all the questions that were put across by most of the participants. Please and please guys, you apply. If you don't, if you don't apply, you can help uh, your friends and family to be able to apply for this particular opportunity and then go get it. Uh, we want to see that a couple of South Sudanese get selected to be able to benefit from this uh, financial help and also to see them uh, graduating from universities in the coming two or three years. Uh, best of luck to all aspiring applicants. You can still reach out to you can still reach out to us uh, by the WhatsApp group. Should you need any help, uh, we'll be there. And uh, if it is something that we can help, we can help. But if it is not something that we cannot help, we can also advise you um, accordingly. Otherwise, we have come to the end of our session and we wish you the very best of luck and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you so much.